Something else we love about international break is that when these players go home and they speak to their home media, they always say a little bit more than they might if they were playing for their clubs and speaking to the media in the countries that they play in. And so Rodrigo has also had this to say on his position at Real Madrid. I have always made it clear that I have the ability to play on the wings. I simply don't like playing as a nine, although in my club I have to do it. With Brazil, I have more freedom to move. Does he have a point, Ale? No, because he doesn't play as a nine for Real Madrid. Even when they play with two strikers, even when they play with him and Vini Jr., he has a tendency of drifting out at wide, to come in underneath, to go and combine with Vini Jr. He's not out there playing with his back to goal. Mm. So it's, it's, he's not playing the actual position of an out and out striker. And I don't think that that's what Carlo Ancelotti is asking him to do. Look, utilize the strength of your game in tight spaces. And if you can get out wide every so often, do so. I'm, I'm sure that Carlo Ancelotti is not saying to Rodrigo, Rodrigo, you have to stay inside the 18-yard box because you're going to finish headers. That's your game. No, that's not what, when he's playing alongside Vinny Jr., what they do. They play off of each other. Now, it's, in a, it's a more central position. It's a little bit more crowded there. Perhaps that's a space that he doesn't like. And, oh, by the way, since Vinny has been injured, right, Jose Lu has been playing. He's been playing with his back to goal. And Rodrigo is running off of Jose Lu. You know what Rodrigo's complaining about? The fact that he hasn't scored a goal in who knows how many games for Real Madrid. That's what he's complaining about. If this guy were flying and scoring a bunch of goals for Real Madrid this season, there would not be any complaints as to what position he's playing for Real Madrid. And oh, by the way, you're playing for Real Madrid. What do you want? Go sit on the bench. Is that better, Rodrigo? You're playing. Don't complain. Okay, does he have a point? Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I get Rodrigo not being happy with the role that he's playing, whatever that role is, and however you want to, de however you want to, to define that. Um, but, and I've made this point when we've discussed Kylian Mbappe, Real Madrid as a club are the star. <laughs> if you're wearing that white shirt, you do what's asked of you. That is the culture of Real Madrid, how they are as a football club. So while you may not be happy with whatever role you are, and he's not the only one to be dissatisfied with what's being asked of you, do what's being asked of you. Everybody else does. You can complain all you like, but do as you like. But, but do as, as, as you're instructed. That's how this club is built. That's how their successes come about. I, I, I don't see the point in, in making an issue of this when you're wearing the white of reality. And, and don't ever <laughs> forget that whatever you say, when you're away with a national team, makes the rounds. It's eventually going to get back to Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. So... I, I don't, I, it's, it's naive to think like, well, it's because I'm, I'm giving this interview in Portuguese, so therefore they're not going to understand it in Spain, right? So it, it's going to be okay, guys. They're not going to hear about it, so I'm just going to say it anyways. Come on, man. What do you think of all this, Mario? No, I, I totally understand what the guys are saying. When you play for a tycoon like, like Madrid, you understand, you just have to be careful in the sense of what you expose yourself in. Because sometimes when we, we, we go to the national team, it's our emotions that talk, right? Because we, we feel different. We are more our players, a lot of players that are not with you on the day-to-day -day base. So sometimes you let your emotions speak and say like, hey, here... I'm among all great talents, so let me speak out too and show my side of the story. And sometimes you can get yourself in fire, and I think he puts himself in, in this situation. You saw this already. This is not the first thing that happened here. There was a while ago when he had a moment when he got substituted, and uh, he reacted really bad to Ancelotti. Ancelotti called him out right on the bench, walked up to him, and told him exactly what he thought about him, and he calmed down straight away. Why? Because... From everybody else that you hear, Ancelotti is a very people's person. So it, the moment he feels that you are becoming sensitive towards him, he will call you out straight away because he also has the experience of being a player. When it comes to Brazil, this is a country that plays beautiful football. Where things go well, it's incredibly, you know, to, to watch and the things that they do. But when things don't go well, then they're going to pick up the little things. And when they pick up the little things, you know, people like Rodrigo... He, he, he's still also a, a young, talented player. Sometimes has to be careful that he doesn't let the emotions run too far for him because then they are taking more control than the, the stuff that you do on the field. And that's the only thing I have to say. When you're young, just chill out, play for your country, great nation, great club. Just do your job and leave the rest for somebody else. 
What's the Brazilian view on all of this then, Gustavo? Rodrigo's role right now at Real Madrid. Yeah, I can bring you also uh, the view from, from here, from Madrid, because uh, there's an important thing about that. Because, uh, because of a disagreement between Real Madrid and La Liga, uh, Madrid isn't allowing them play, their players to talk with the press after the match in the Spanish championship. Uh, so this season, for example, uh, us from ESPN Brazil, we couldn't hear Rodrigo in any, any time here, any time. So this is the first time that we can hear Rodrigo because of the Brazilian national team at the press conference. So I also think that Rodrigo wanted to talk. Rodrigo wanted to say some things about, their, about his position, about his feeling, about uh, what has happened in this season, one goal, one assist in 11 games. So I think that uh, there is, there's also the side of the player that he, he wanted to talk. He wanted to say some things uh, about his position. I do, I do think that he, he, he does have a point because uh, the best of Rodrigo playing for Real Madrid was on the right wing with Benzema and Vinicius Jr. at the 4-3-3 formation. When Ancelotti changed the formation for this season to, to have Jude Bellingham for the 4-3-1-2 formation, Rodrigo changed his position. Uh, Jude Bellingham is playing behind him and Vinicius. And Vinicius now is finding his best, the best way to, to also move to the left. And I think that Rodrigo is a little bit lost about where should I play? Should I move to the right? Should I play in the center? Should I look for the center forward position? Uh, should I change the position with Jury Bell? And I, I really think that Rodrigo is, is, is struggling a little bit to find his position now after this, this change of formation. In the last match, because t before this, this break, uh, Madrid beat Osasuna 4 0. Rodrigo started on the bench and Ancelotti. Changed again the formation for the 4-4-2 with Rodrigo on the bench. And when he, he went to play, he, he, he entered in the game as a forward, not in the right wing where was Federico Valverde. So I think that Rodrigo does have a point, but he must look to himself, understand what is happening around him. Jurbelian is now the guy in Madrid. Vinicius is still also the guy. So Rodrigo must, I think, that really uh, look at himself, understand what is happening, and try, try to do his best again. Seeing as though it is the theme, Real Madrid players talking about their positions and their playing time, we wanted to show you what Tony Kroos had to say. This follows on from Luka Modric, who is a little bit frustrated that he's not playing as much as he would like to. Well, Tony Kroos doesn't seem to mind waiting his turn to play. He says, I prepare in the best possible way to be able to play at the right level. I'm happy with the team's level and mine. I hope we can continue like this. I feel good. And I also have had more rest than I normally do. Now, is this the right way to do it, or is there a little underlying message here? Oh, I, I, I think he's handling this quite well. He says, you know what? When they need me to play, I'm available, I'm ready to go. Carlo, if you need me today, that's great. If you need me tomorrow, I'll be ready tomorrow. I'm resting, I'm, I'm, I'm fresh, I feel good, the team is playing well, we're winning games, this is a good life, I don't have to go and play with Germany anymore, so you know what, I'm just putting my legs up and, Carlo, whenever you need me, I'm here, baby. Ah, uh, why are you laughing, Mario? <laughs> because, you know, how hell you saying it, you know, it's so funny, but it's, it's mm. actually experienced player talking. That's true, you know, like, sometimes when you come, he's also the age group, he has achieved so much in his career, so at the end, later on, you also have to sometimes just calm down, relax, because you know, you want to get your moments, and also what Ancelotti does really well, he talks to players like Cruz, and he talks to them and, and talks about the system that he wants to play and what is better for the team. Because when you become a, a player that, that understands the game that well and have played with so much experience you, you, you possess in your, in, your, in your baggage, then he also uses your for the tactical reason and what is the best setup. So I'm sure he has conversations with Cruz. That's why he talks like that. Why are you going to attack your coach if your coach never attacked you? You're going to play for him when he needs you. Especially when you come to the final times of your, I don't want to say straight away, final time of his career, but let's say he's way more seasoned than he was years ago. And now, obviously, it was not an attack on Carlo Ancelotti Modric and what he had to say, but he's taken a different approach to what he's 
viewing his lack of playing time. Listen, I, 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 I sympathise with, with both Tony Cruz and, and Luka Modric. Here are two of the best players of, of, of a generation. Father Time is slowly catching up with them. Uh, Luka Modric, a whole lot older than, than Tony Cruz, I think five years in, in all. But they're, they're recognising that that their time is, is coming to an end. And, and listen, I've, I've, I've been there. You clinked it with everything you've got. But <laughs> inevitably, and, and to, to the point that Ali was making about Rodrigo, is they're playing for Real Madrid. And as I said before, there's a culture around this club that the club are the star and you do what's asked of you. You make the best of it. So in keeping with, with Tony Cruz, if it means and I get a little more rest, I'm, I'm, that's going to be the highlight. I, I, I couldn't agree more with, with both of them. And... And sympathise with, with, with the role that, that, that's being asked. Again, this is two players who have seen it and won it all. But Father Time remains... Right, and, and, and what's the option for Tony Cruz? I'm just... I'm going to get upset, go to the media, go crazy and, and talk about Carlo Ancelotti and Real Madrid and ruin a relationship and, and as your own history as a player in this club. Why? That's not worthwhile. That, going down that path is not worthwhile, and I don't think it was ever an option for both Tony Cruz and Luka Modric. They're just going to see their time and enjoy it as best they can. They've achieved everything that they could achieve with this club. And now, let's just enjoy it. Hey, these guys want to run around? Let them run around. When we get our chance, we'll get out there and make a difference. And if we don't, that's all right. We'll come back to training tomorrow and we'll be happy about it. I don't think this, these are guys, in particular Tony Cruz, that are suited for, let me just go fight this. No. Nah. Look, at this point in my career, fine. You want to play the young guys? Go play the young guys. When you never you need me, I'm right here. I'll be ready for it. Okay, something Real Madrid did fight was Nacho's red card suspension. I'm, I'm sorry, where, where, where the, was the ball? These are the arguments. And the Spanish FA have also said that on, based on these arguments, it doesn't merit the maximum three-game ban. Yeah. So, I blame you, Kate. No, 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 shoot no, no, the, I'm shooting the messenger here. You can here. shoot the messenger because the question is here, are we now determining red cards on the results of the player's health, on the result of whether the player featured in the next squad? No, no, we, we are determining the, the length of the suspension by the fixture list. Mm -hmm. Had the Classico not been when it was, I, I don't think this gets overturned. I, 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 I'm finding it really hard to justify. When I saw that Real Madrid were content, uh, competing, uh, challenging the... Contesting. Contesting. Yes. That's, I'm here Challenging the you, red Jack. card. Thanks, thanks, Sally. <laughs> yeah. Challenging the red card. <laughs> well, yeah. One day I'll, I'll give you a Spanish word to use. When, yes, when you're that's all right. Back. Thank you. We get to that. We get to that. When I see Real Madrid challenging this, I, I thought the lawyers, the lawyers are the only ones happy about this because there is no winning... This and as a matter of fact, it, the, the league could take a, a more adverse uh, adverse position and lengthen the suspension because as, as red cards go, I don't think they get any worse. Mm -hmm. I really don't think they get much worse than that. So to hear this, to hear that explanation again, um, Ali said it best: controversy. That that's and and well, I'll tell you why I think we are having this discussion. Lunging, knee high challenge. The ball is nowhere near endangering the safety of the player. I mean, it is the definition no. of a straight red car. But how do you think Porto feels? How do you, how do you think Girona feels about this? Huh? And that we actually go out there and, and explain this by saying, well, see, Porto wasn't as badly injured as we thought he was, and so therefore, whatever Nacho did, it's all excused and... Yeah, it's a classical this upcoming weekend. Does Real Madrid need center backs because they have all sorts of injuries? Oh, no, yes, they do. What does, what, can Nacho play center back? All right, get him back. Get him back. Get him back. It's, it's, I mean, again, if you believe in the theories that Real Madrid and Barcelona, but in this case specifically Real Madrid gets preferential team in La Liga, this is Exhibit A. Uh, so, Gustavo, oh. has this been received controversially in Spain, this decision? Yes, especially for the other teams, especially for Barcelona, because what else can I say? It was really an absurd to reduce the, this ban for two games when we have El Clasico in, in two weeks. And, and also, Madrid will probably have Dabi Alaba against Barcelona because he's training already, he's feeling well, maybe he will play against Sevilla next Saturday, so forth. El Clásico against Barcelona, Real Madrid will probably have Rudiger 
Alaba e Nacho. We have to remember that against Osasuna, there was only one center available, only, Rud only Rudiger. Chouameni played uh, as a center back uh, right beside Rudiger. So for Real Madrid, it's the best news possible mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. Alaba and also Nacho because Ancelotti really has much, much confidence on Nacho because he can play in any position in the defense. Yeah. Okay, so but, you will okay, be seeing. Go on, go on, Mario. You, you, you know what I, what I found interesting? I, I, even when in my time, if I made a tackle like that, and I got a red card before, so I tackled like that, but why didn't they judge me like the way they judged them? This was really kind of them. Oh, my God. This was, oh, man. I don't, even Nacho will probably look at the situation and think you're like, hey, oh, my God, I was so late and I was so dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, well, now and Nacho Keio. gets a little bit of rest. Go on, Gustavo. Now, you know, we have also to remember that it was so, so, so the severe of this, of what, of what happened. A Florentino Perez, Real Madrid's president, called Porto after the match to say that he was sorry about what happened. So even the, even the president of Real Madrid saw what happened and said, oh my God. And he called himself to Porto to say that he was sorry. There you go. So it's when Venezuela get a point off you, when Florentino Perez yeah. has to make that, an apology. That, that's what happened. Yeah. He's a landmark. Venezuela joined Brazil and yeah. football world has just that's gone it. crazy. That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's anyway. It.